Hello everyone, welcome back to Newsfront. It's May 17th, we've got lots of news today and we're going to have a chit chat. Yeah. I'm here, Jason's here, let's do it. Alright, first things first mate, Dustin Poirier went on the MMA Hour to have a chat with Ariel Helwani, of course, had a lot to say. Well, first of all, we called out, uh, he's calling out everybody, right? Nate's playing about the one in 2018. I've been offered this fight three times and it has accepted three times. Wow. I don't hate anyone, Ariel. But if there was a line right before hate, Kobe's standing there. For sure, yeah. We fought on the, he came in, fought, a, he's never beat anybody coming off of a win in the UFC, Ariel. He's never beat somebody coming off of a win. You get a glass of whiskey in you. They call you a couple of days before. Shit happens. I mean, he was he was thinking about the Nate fight, thinking about the Connor fight. Yeah. But now he says he wants to fight anyone before December, basically. Yeah. So basically, he's got like three fights that he wants to do. He wants to do. Colby is now in the mix. Mm -hmm. He wants to do Chandler, and he wants to do Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz seems to be like the front runner because he really wants to fight at 170 yeah. on July 30th. July 30th. Yeah. And uh, that puts Colby a little bit more into mm -hmm. the running as well. Because I mean, he didn't want to fight Colby initially because he talked a bunch of shit about his family. Family and his daughter and everything. So he didn't want to give him the smoke. Is that, that's what they say, isn't it? Why do you smoke? think that is? Because he's an arsehole, isn't he? I mean, like, he doesn't want him to make any money off his name. <laughs> well, he said, he's got uh... brain damage, obviously, as well. So <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Sorry about that. He said he drank some whiskey and he was just like, fuck it. Yeah, just go for it. Like... Maybe he was he drinking the proper 12, maybe. It's just got a bit of the Connor in him. I mean, it makes sense that he, he just wants to... He drank some of his own hot sauce. I hear that's <laughs> well, fermented the, the, as well. The Oliveira fight was December last year. So if he doesn't fight until December, it's going to be a year. So he's like, I'll fight anyone, even if it's Colby. That's how desperate he is, clearly. But even at 170, it, it could be anyone. It could be anyone. Which fight do you want the most? I don't really care. No, um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Colby. Get some bad blood up in there. Put a little hot sauce on it. <laughs> Since Colby's brain damaged, I don't think he's fit oh, to fight. Man, there we go. There, there are three really good fights. Any one of them is really good. They're all sales. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think sometimes it's a matter of which one do you make the most money with. Yeah. All three of those guys are all going to make money. Well, we haven't heard anything from Colby. We don't know if he's ready or if he's got brain damage since the day I was born. Drugs used to what they say I was on. Something like that. Oh, <laughs> well, my bad. Talented. He was talking some shit about Chana, though, wasn't he? He said his, uh, he's only fought guys that are coming off loss. Yeah, and he's not wrong, but it's the facts. They're also really good. Because he put out a yeah. blast and said, anyone come get it. And Wonder Boy was like, respectfully, me, please. He doesn't care. He just wants to fight mm -hmm. at 170 for July 30th. Yeah. yeah. I'll watch it. All right. So Tony did an interview. Doesn't do Zoom. Won't do Joe Rogan. But he will do the MMA hour, Jason. He says a lot here. And something is starting to get kind of concerning with this. He talked about how the Chandler KO was like a fluke. You know, I mean, I always give people props a little bit, sometimes a little bit more mm -hmm. than what it should. But it's, it's, it's going into good character. That's how I was brought up. But I don't even think he meant to even just con con like connect with it. It was like a range finder for him. Problems with his MMA team. Mm -hmm. So now they're like trying to switch. He that has a part team. Up. He has actually he has a team. He's talking about suing Paradigm. Between each other. Even Dana said it, they fucked me over. And um, you know we're gonna be going through some legal things, which is kind of crazy. You don't want to talk too much about it. Yeah. Uh, he called it the. Uh, he said it was part of the Miller Ayala Act, which has to do with like the way management treats yeah. teams more with conflict evil of than interest, Disney. or treats athletes rather with conflict of interest. More evil than Disney is absolutely correct. <laughs> it, it's kind of strange though, because you look like I actually like went through and I read that part of the act, and mm. it's like I don't know what Casey has to make here. But all of this to say, he's going through all these kind of like excuses. Mm. And let me just say this: like I'm a huge Tony fan for one, and I think you have to have that kind of confidence at the end of the day to be a fighter like boss root when he was like 50 was saying he would beat fedor and he was like that's what i have to he believe would. though because i'm fighting in front of like 20,000 people you have to believe in yourself yeah. but on the same token it's like tony's not really taking responsibility for any of this mm -hmm. none of it yeah it's true uh, there's not it, it's, it's strange he's talking like before it was all about the wins and the win streak and the fights and now that's going away and we're moving towards the end of his career he's becoming a lot more vocal about things that he's not been happy with for a long time kind of a a little sad to see in a way i think but again he is at that point in his career where it's like i'm for tony you know the next couple of fights are probably just going to be fun fights fan favorite fights i'm sure he wants 
wants to go back to a title. That's why he said he didn't want to train with Charlie Olives. He didn't want to go train with Charlie because he said he's the, he's in my division. He's the only guy. I'm the only guy he hasn't finished. And he said, realistically, I think it's a bad idea. And I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm not Tony Ferguson, but he is definitely keeping the mentality of, oh, I'm going back towards the title. I need to make sure the path is, is clear. The path is dark and full of terrors already. You know? <laughs> I mean, to give him credit, though, he did look like the old Tony. He looked like the prime he Tony did. in that first yeah. round. He looked incredible. Yeah. He said that was actually what cheered him up because Dana said that. A mm -hmm. bunch of fighters were saying that to him. I think he's right. And I, yeah. I do think, so to go along with what he said to kind of double back on that from the other side, I do think in a lot of ways, he's right about some of these things. I do think that the Chandler KO was a fluke yeah. to the extent that Chandler oh, even oh, said- Oh, do you hear that, Mike? I mean, that's your <laughs> mate right there. He's telling that shit. Well, Chandler even said so. He was like, dude, I was just going for he like- He did, a range finder. Yeah, yeah. a range finder. Yeah. Like, he didn't even see it coming. So, I mean, I think there is a bit of luck involved yeah. when you have this many variables into a sport. I also think it was the most vicious knockout ever. So, I mean, it's True. both of those things at the exact same time. It was nasty, wasn't it? So Islam Mahachev uh, oh, yeah. did a little interview with Brett Okamoto on ESPN. From ESPN? From ESPN. Oh, wow. Especially sports, please, now. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, I'm the best. Oliveira ain't shit, and um, he wants a title fight, basically. He thinks his 10-fight win streak is much better than Oliveira's. He's beat Drew Dober and uh, Mo Moises, uh, Bobby Green. Those are some legit top 10 guys. He was scheduled against Darius, so that's going to count. Yeah, that's, and he was scheduled against RDA. Oh, so uh, those are some good schedules. What, what's frustrating about it is because this is obviously an incredible fight. Mm. Like, this is like the oh, fight. Yeah. Dana was even talking about this at the post fight press conference. This is like the one you want to see. Uh, Danny Segura from MMA Junkie actually did a tweet about this. It was like what Charles Oliver has done with his ground game is he's made it so dangerous that people don't want to follow him to the ground. Mm -hmm. And it's like he's giving himself a standing 10 count in MMA. Yeah because people are just going to let him come back yeah. up. They're going to let him get up on his own time. He's going to kind of wait it out, wait for the ref to actually stand them up. That's what's so good about this Islam fight, because Islam is going to go straight to that ground. That's probably where he wants to be anyway. I think you make a good point. I mean, when you can do everything in MMA, I mean, and somebody's only going to do one thing. You've got a big advantage already. But yeah, this is literally, this is like a John Jones DC matchup in my mind. Maybe not the same in terms of profile, but both guys on massive win streaks have shown that they've got no equal in many areas of their competition. They're finally going to fight. I want to look at the stats on it because I always come back to that Jones DC stat because there was a stat about this is the first time ever two guys have won a certain amount of fights within the UFC and they're going to fight each other. It's probably quite similar here because they're both on like 10 fight win streaks. Very big stat. Well, how, when's the last <laughs> two guys on 10 fight win streaks in the UFC fighting oh, each other. Streets. That really doesn't yeah, sure. happen very often. Like maybe they're 10 and 0 or 15 and 0, but 10 wins in the UFC doesn't always happen. So it's going to be a banger of a fight. He said he's going to finish him on the ground. That's what he wants to do. He wants to prove everyone wrong. He wants to take him down, finish him on the ground. So everybody's scared, but he's not scared. Yeah, but he did also say he's going to break him and he's like, he's quit loads of times. I'm going to make him quit, which is the same story we've heard for about three years now. And Oliveira is just like, that's cool. You know, so I don't think it's going to work personally. Well, so what, what, do you, what do you think about what Islam is saying here? Is he just doing this? Like, does he really believe what he's saying when he's uh, comparing their resumes? Is he just doing this to get a fight? Is this Ali Abdel as he's pulling the strings behind him? I think they've sat him down to put a microphone in his face and asking him the same questions he's been answering for a long time because he's still not for anyone that's going to get him closer to the title. So he's just repeating himself until he actually fights him. We won't know. I don't necessarily think he's an amazing promoter. You know, he's just saying what he believes and how he thinks the fight is going to go. So I don't think I think he's he's definitely not an amazing promoter yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i mean but it's so i don't know it's just kind of like we're hearing the same things over and over again well what do you want to see more of fact i want to see more Darius of his... or Oliveira. what you oh, okay more of his... what? I'm sorry where okay. are we going with that um i love benil Oh, Benny. I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if they did Islam versus Benil. If they put Islam in the title fight, that would be understandable. Benil, Michael Chandler. Let's do a, a proper top contenders matchup and we'll go from there. That'll be a good fight. Darius I'd like Chandler. to see I'd like to see it too. I don't know though. Like I'm I'm kind of okay with either at this point. It's like who else do you give Oliver in the meantime? No one. You could just give him uh Islam yeah. and then you could just give him Darius. So you could just do both of those fights. At the end of the day, if you're good enough to beat the champion, you're gonna beat the champion. If you're not, then it doesn't, I mean, you know, I think you're right. I, don't, I think they can wait or they can just let him fight him now. And if he's not good enough, then he's not good enough. If he beats him, he beats him. Yeah. I hope you guys liked it today. Uh, we're trying a different format. I hope it works for you guys. What do you think, Bailey? Worked for me. <laughs>
All right. I just kind of want to watch some things on my computer now after hearing that <laughs> lovely voice. I don't know what just happened. We should watch the latest video on Fight From. Anyhow, guys, appreciate you for watching. Catch you on the next video. No. No.